Just recording, man. So I have here Justin Wetzel, professional MMA fighter from LFA with a fight record of five and one. How are you, man? Great, man. Just got done watching the fights. Uh, just enjoying my Saturday evening. How are you doing, man? Man, it's good here, you know. Early morning here in Finland. It's oh, yeah. What time? Cold. Sorry? What time is it? Right now, it's, it was well, not that early, six, six or seven. Oh, okay, I mean, that's fairly early. Fairly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm an early riser, though. So, uh, for me, it's, well, I cannot say it's the middle of the morning for me. No, it's quite fairly early, you know, but uh, I usually wake up at 4.30 or 5. Did you catch the fights? Man, uh, literally, I was watching yesterday uh, the Stipe versus Cormier fight. I didn't watch it um, on, on the day of the event, but uh, I recorded mm -hmm. it, so I was watching it yesterday, the whole event. You know, um, very interesting. I wanted Cormier to win, man. Like, I'm a big fan of DC, you know, a uh, big fan of the big boys. Definitely heavyweight mm -hmm. is the, 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 cat, the weight category that's my favorite. But, man, unfortunately, he got the loss. Very uh, controversial with the eye poking. I don't know if you saw the... A little bit, yeah. I mean, I was uh, I was going for Stipe personally. Um, but I, it kind of sucks for, for Cormier with the eye pokes. But, you know, kind of similar in the first fight, though. Like, uh, DC was given the eye pokes. Not justifying Stipe's, but... Yeah, uh, well, I think n none of them uh, was uh, on purpose, right? It was like pure accident, of course, yeah. Yeah, keeping the yeah. distance and everything. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, def DC had that plan to retire with a win, right? Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't do it. He still had, a, like, a great, a greater professional career. But Stipe, yeah. man, now Stipe is the guy in the heavyweight division, man. Yeah, you know, uh, I know Francis is next in line, but my buddy Curtis, uh, I'm hoping he gets his crack. That's deep Pretty blades? Yeah, of course. Wow, man. That, that would be quite a good fight. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. And then his only two losses are to Nganu. I mean, and Nganu pretty much beats everybody. I mean, and, well, that, that guy's a beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like his hand. But, but, I mean, we've, I, mean I, I understand the rematch. Between them, because Nagan has just beaten everyone since. But like after that, if Stipe gets past him, I mean, you, you know, you gotta find new blood for uh, for for the champ for the champion. And yeah. Curtis and Stipe haven't had a fight yet, so. Because if, if Stipe Stipe beats Nganu, man, he will be up there like. Uh, like oh yeah. Nobody, nobody in the heavyweight division would do what he has done so far. No, definitely not. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like, who wants to see a, a trilogy if, if Stipe walks through Ninganu again Imagine for five that. rounds? Like, it's going to be hard to to get another trilogy fight right away. So, like I was saying, that kind of opens the door for, for Curtis. And Alistair, too. Alistair's been talking. He wants to make a, a title run, too. So, I mean, he's kind of on a little win streak. So, you know, he's got a fight coming up. So, we'll see where that plays out and maybe get a rematch against Stipe. Do you know Alistair personally? Yeah, yeah. He well, I mean, he trains here in Denver, but I've I've hung out with him outside the gym before. I talked to him, and you know, gone to dinner. And he, I wouldn't say I'm like a very close personal friend at all, but I mean, yeah, I, I do know him personally. Yeah, the huge guy. I I, I I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Alistair since back in the kickboxing days, man. Like a K1 oh, and course. everything. I, I remember being a high school nerd on my on my my computer watching like K1 fights and you know old Pride fights back in the day, man. When I was just coming up watching, like he was he'd be on my computer and stuff. I remember I watched. Uh, I don't know if you've seen. I saw this fight versus uh, Todd Duffy live. No, I like not. After, it was after Todd Duffy left the UFC and he fought Alistair, and Alistair just there was like a, two trains going at each other, but Alistair was a much bigger train, destroyed him. Like 50 seconds in. It was crazy. Yeah, it's insane. I remember, like, uh, I was watching him also, like, many, many years ago on video, like, um, the training he had when he just built pure muscle. And he yeah. got even bigger, man. That, that guy was, like, how tall is he? Uh, he's got to be at least 6'3", at least. Yeah. That's a big dude. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a little taller. Maybe 6'5". Man, I, I need to train with those kind of guys, man, with those big, big guys. Because I'm a big guy myself, but in in, in, um, in in MMA right now where I'm training at, 
I just started training with the with the advanced uh, team and um, with the big guys on my own weight, and boom, I hurt my knee, man. I tore some ligaments. Was it grappling? Yeah. Dude, it's always grappling, man. All, like, you know, kickboxing and shit like that hurts and whatnot, but, like, the big injuries, like, that I notice and the ones that I've, like, received, it's always grappling, what, jiu-jitsu or wrestling or something. Like, something's popping, something's getting twisted. Exactly, man. It's, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, it's not as violent as, like, stand sparring or kickboxing, but all the injuries are all the time come, or it's always grappling. Oh, Man, definitely. Good. But even though, because I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, grappling is new for me, you know. I've always been a kickboxer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just decided to try this MMA thing, at least for to get the experience, you know, get like one or two fights in. Because well, I'm already old guy for the sport. I'm th- uh, in next week, I'm turning 35. Uh, but, like, I, I love to fight, man. It's just something that it's always has been yeah. in me. So I decided, okay, let me try MMA. So before I started training MMA, I, did, I, I went to a beginner's course in BJJ and slowly evolved from there. But I really enjoyed BJJ. I, I, I really enjoyed the, the mental side of it because it's very complex, very strategic. Have you been doing it in uh, the gi or no gi? Both. Both? Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, both. But, uh, well, I cannot say I – because uh, sometimes uh, I enjoy no gi and sometimes I enjoy the gi, you know, like that, especially yeah. the, the, the color chokes, man. That, those, are, those are my favorite. Yeah, those are different. Those are – those used to drive me crazy. I used to do gi, actually, for a couple of years a while ago. I, I'm in my garage right now. I'm actually looking at my gi over in the corner. I haven't, I haven't used it in a while, but pretty much no gi now. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean, man. It's uh, it is a lot of fun. It's a, it's a very technical kind of chess matchy aspect of martial arts. Yeah, but for some reason, like everyone gets injured somehow doing it. I mean, I guess it makes sense. You're twisting and squeezing bones and muscles. So true, man. And, and like, man, for example, like uh, the, the fingertips started to hurt so much. Yeah, totally- especially in the gi. Especially in the gi, when you're like grabbing those grips and like doing, I don't know if they have you like do drills where you like pull a partner across the mat. Oh, I hated that, dude. I like, I it drove me crazy. My fingers would be sore. I have like all these little like bumps on them. Like, what is this shit? Exactly, man. Like, uh, same with me. I was like, first of all, like, the pain of like, where is this coming from? Am I getting all that yeah. fast? Like, what the fuck? No. Like, maybe no, I need to sleep a little bit more, you know, to get rid of that. <laughs> Yeah, I d- actually did a gi class by like a year and a half ago when we went back to my hometown. My buddies opened up, uh, like they have a gi academy, and I went to it, and they were doing those drills. I was like, ah, I hate this. <laughs> it's just not fun. Uh, Man, but, but, but it's fun. It's fun to roll around, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is fun. I do, I do enjoy it and stuff like that, like the um, just roll around. Man. And I'm a big guy, so sometimes in the training, they call me like a panda bear because – they're like they roll around as well, but like when they attack, they're kind of fast, explosive. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 at the beginning, I was very explosive in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know. But then, little by little, I was uh, learning to calm myself down, you know. Like, yeah. Control the breathing. Jeez. Yeah, and there's still spots to be explosive, but just like not like 100 miles an hour the whole time out the gate. Exactly, man. Because also in, in stand up, you gotta you gotta keep calm. But when you see that opening, you go for it. Pam pam, you know, like one two, yeah. or like one two three, and then you go for it, right? But yeah. in, in BJJ, it's a little bit more. Okay, make sure that you're doing the right thing. Uh, that uh, the, the the next movement is not gonna affect on you. It's not gonna like backfire on you and stuff like that. But yeah. bro, uh, you had a long career. How long you been doing MMA? Like a long time. Uh, well, I started training right outside of high school, man. Uh, I had my first, like, actual sanctioned fight um, in 2011, February of 2011. Mm-hmm. It was uh, shortly after my uh, 19th birthday. So I had my first amateur fight when I was 19. You know, I'm 28 now, so I'm damn near a decade into this, man. And, you know, it's uh, – it is it has been a long career, but, you know – my background, I was, I, I really wasn't like a gifted athlete in high school. I wasn't like a star performer, a wrestler. Um, I really wasn't. You know, my junior year, I was one, one win and nine losses my wrestling season. My senior year, I was like, I, I turned it around kind of. But the the process of amateur to pro, it's just been, you know, it's it's been a journey, but it's been a necessary one and the growth and changes I made. You know, it's just, uh, I don't know, what do you, you want to call it? A late bloomer? 
<laughs> I'm, tw- I'm 28 now, but I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling in my athletic prime, stronger than ever and better than ever technically too. Man, that that's amazing. I, I, can, I can relate, you know, because uh, growing up, I was never good at sports. Man. Uh, I was always the, the chubby kid. And uh, I will always play soccer. The only reason why I would play soccer is because everybody would play it. I was at that time in Central America. Everybody was playing soccer. Like the recess time in school, you play soccer. And then like uh, uh, f- school finishes in the afternoon, you go play soccer. But I would suck, man, like really bad. I would be one of those kids that would go run and hit the ball and the ball would just like go past me, right? Yeah. I would miss the kick. Yeah. I would really bad. And my friends sometimes would not pick on me, pick uh, to be in the team because I really sucked. Of and course, I yeah. Know, okay, what what do I do, man? And but so but martial arts has always been an interest in me. Mm-hmm. Uh, watching Dragon Ball as you're a fan, you know. Of course. Yeah, you know, I was like, man, I want to fight like that. And then uh, watching yeah. the movies, I was a big Bruce Lee fan. Mm-hmm. And in that I didn't see too many Bruce Lee's growing up. Yeah. But, you know, like in that school that I was, in their curriculum, they had Kung Fu. And that's how really? I started. Yeah, that's how they I started. They had Kung Fu? They had Kung Fu. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's it, pretty sweet. It was very nice. It was super surprising because, like, I remember you had the option to choose Kung Fu or theater. I like, oh, man, this is my chance to do martial arts, man, Kung Fu. And I started in Kung Fu. And again, I sucked at it, man. Uh, yeah. Very, very bad. But I, the, the difference is that I really enjoyed it. It was not like soccer. Soccer that I, I would play soccer. I would not enjoy, but I would play just to be with the guys and hang yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I can relate so much to that. As if the, for the reverse for me, at school would be you play football. <laughs> so... I mean, yeah. I mean, well, football, not football for you, obviously, American football. But. No, no, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I'm like, uh, that's the problem I had when I came to Europe the first time. People would tell me, man, I play football immediately. Like, American football? Really? Yeah. And no, no, no. Like, football, oh, soccer. And they would get upset. No, it's not soccer. It's football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense to me. Like, I mean, football, like, actual soccer football, like, it's way more of the foots on the ball. It yeah, does make movie. sense, like, uh, uh, literally, right? But apparently, yeah. history says that the word soccer came f- first. No. Really? Was it the other way around? One of them came first. And then when it was, when it was time to, to change the name, it was like, nah, man, like, we already put the name on the other sport. Let's just keep this. So I think that's how it stood to football and soccer. I think I could be wrong. Don't, quote, don't, don't believe me on that. <laughs> uh, I won't. Yeah. But, but yeah, man, like, and then I, uh, I was like in Kung Fu tournaments, winning tournaments, getting into fights already. I mean, competing tournaments and then doing the katas and all that and progressing. And then when um, I had to leave Central America and then that's how I started into kickboxing because the country that I was at at that time didn't have Kung Fu. So I couldn't continue. You mm-hmm. know, um, they, t- they were like okay, telling me like I could do Taekwondo or karate. Even though, yeah, no, no, nothing's bad with those uh, disciplines, but it just was not for me. I wanted to do Kung Fu. But there was something about kickboxing, the full contact about it, man, that I really, really enjoyed. And then I just started getting into it, man. I love getting into scraps and everything. It just became really fun, really fun. Yeah. And, and same you like you, it? same like you, I got it. I did a mini fight club in school. <laughs> really? Yes. Dang, you know, I, since I've been telling that story more and more, I've, I've had like more and more people come like, yeah, I did the same thing. I'm like, wow, I guess I'm not that special. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like, I, I've heard uh, a couple people now that have talked about having their own fight club and stuff. Yeah, man, I was like a, a, a sophomore in high school, you know, and where I was, it's just because I told you I was in a new country, it was in Bolivia at that time, and I came later, already school has started, so. All the um, the, uh, the vacancies were taken. Like there was no space for me to go join certain uh, certain schools like that I wanted to join. So I had to join a school that only could take me, and it was like a rough school, you know. Like uh, they had rough kids, and they were kind of rough. That like if you would meet them, you know, it, w- it would be the interaction it would not be like, "Hey man, how you doing?" Nice to meet you. It would be like, "Hey man, how you doing?" So do you know how to fight? Immediately, or really. Or, yeah, yeah, or so like that somebody would introduce you, like, hey, how you doing? And you ask your friend, hey, man, so what's up with this guy? He knows how to fight. 
that was the mentality, man. And wow. I was already coming back from my Kung Fu background and having a little bit of trouble in the streets as a young guy. <laughs> Every and like, and they told me, man. So you know how to fight? I was like, hell, bro, yes. And, <laughs> and it came. To, I was the, the guy who would fight all the time. <laughs> and that's how the whole thing started, man. You know, and and, and it. And that was, and what thing. country was that? Bolivia. Bolivia, man. Yeah, South yeah. America. You know, it, it, we started first with six people, and then it just grew to like twenty. You know, like people fighting. Fighting, yeah. Wow. Would you have crowds? Yeah, we would have, like, at the end, we would have crowds, man. And, like, uh, like the, the girls would come and watch us, the cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, man. But we had to chase locations. That was, that was quite tricky because we would do it at, like, a, still in school, like, but after hours, you know, yeah. the, the janitor, uh, he was, like, our friend. He was, like, okay, just come inside. Just don't... <laughs> you guys had an inside man? Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys fought inside the school, though? Sorry? You guys fought in, like, the school grounds? Yeah, man, like, uh, in the soccer oh, field. Man. Damn. You guys had in-house and everything. Yeah, ours was, like, off-site on a, at a park. Yeah, but we had to change it and eventually at a park because we are growing so much. There were, like, so many people joining that it's just like uh, people were noticing, okay, those, those kids are fighting all the time. Like, we're going to call the police and this and that. So, oh, man, we got to change. And we chose the worst possible location in this, like, big park that had a big field. But it was surrounded by, it was like people would see us fight there, man. Yeah. But I the funny it. thing is, the funny thing is, like, I don't want to talk bad about the Bolivian force po police. But, man, they would come and they would not stop the fight. They would actually, okay, man, let me see you. <laughs> <laughs> they would want to watch and shit. Yeah, they would even uh, play bets, man. <laughs> I mean, that's cool, dude. I mean, like if like they they recognize the, the like everyone's there voluntarily, right? Everyone's there, like no one's holding a gun to anybody's head saying you have to fight. Like exactly. I don't know when we had the yeah we had the cops call us like after after like our sixth like event if you want to call it that we had we had the cops come every time. But we, we would just bring, like, a football and a Frisbee and start throwing it around when they came. But they would just break everything up and be like, go home. Yeah, man. Like, uh, you, that sucks when that happens. <laughs> but, man, it's just uh, – it's crazy how, like, the fighting, everybody's just, like, interested. If you think about it, if you're, like, in school, you hear, like, fight, fight, fight. Everybody goes to see it. Yeah. People see on the street a fight. People, like, see a video. You know, it just catches the attention. Yeah, man. No, but it's one of the basic but, things. But, sorry? I, I, so fighting is just one of the most, like, first, like, primal basic things that's been around since humanity. That is right. That is correct, man. In, like, gladiator times, before times as well. You know, it's just been, it's just entertaining in a way. But, like, mm -hmm. for me, it's more entertaining to be a part of it than to watch it. You know, I, yeah. I, just, I, I, I like to scrap, man. Yeah, I definitely understand that. <laughs> yeah, man. It, 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 it's crazy because it's uh, when, how I started fighting, I would not take into consideration, like, let's say, technique, uh, experience, strategy. I would just go and fight. Because one of the things that, that, that it really um, affected me when I moved to Bolivia was the altitude. Because I was in Central America, which is uh, at the same level of uh, like a sea level, yeah. right? Yeah. And then in Bolivia, it's altitude. Uh, it's like a 3,000, 4,000 uh, meters uh, above sea level. I don't know how much that would be in feet, but very tall, kind of like in Colorado, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and you know, like with the stamina, it does affect you, the, the breathing. Definitely, and dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I moved here from Illinois, and that's sea level. Okay. And... Um, yeah, and it's like five thousand feet plus here. So, dude, yeah, it's uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Again, there, you're training, you're tired already, warming up. You take a dig, try to get a big deep breath of oxygen, and get nothing in return. Just, uh, 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 just yeah. like you're fucking, you're drowning on, on land. It's crazy that feeling because you want to grasp air, but you can't, yeah. or, or you, you feel nothing. there's no space in your lungs. Your lungs are tight. Yeah. It's very crazy, man. White hot feeling, yeah. Yeah, man.
and and so so like uh so you were um you started like uh, tell me a little bit about how you started your mma man like your mma career yeah definitely i um so once i i finished wrestling in high school i uh I, I, you know, I had it all done with the fight club shit and, and, uh, during school and won some fights. So I, I really like that feeling of winning, but then I like had my wrestling career or my wrestling senior year. And I, uh, I got knocked out literally in my, 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 uh, my regionals match. And it was like to continue on. It was just a freak accident. I landed on my head and got knocked out and lost the match. And that was the end of my high school wrestling career. And I was pretty unsatisfied with that. I didn't like it, but, you know, I, I wanted to keep competing after that. And I started going to my local community college and I just was going there because I had like a small wrestling scholarship. Not that there was like a wrestling team there, but I had gotten money from wrestling to go to like the, the community college. So I was just kind of going through the motions, you know, that's what you're supposed to do, blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't know, I found myself very unhappy with it and just not like, kind of like what you were saying with like sports, like you, you weren't having fun with it. You weren't enjoying it. You were just doing it because that's kind of what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And I, um, you know, I stopped going and I wanted to start fighting. Everyone thought I was crazy. Everyone thought I was an idiot. And I just like, I'm, I'm going to start trying like, what you're going to, you're going to start fighting. Like, you know, you're not like a gifted athlete. You weren't like a good wrestler in high school or none of that. Why are you going to do like, you're a dumbass. <laughs> like, good luck with that. But I, I'm like, I had fun training. I had fun getting my ass beat. And like, even though I was bad, like I wanted to improve. I loved it. I had fun with it. I knew I wanted to compete. Uh, I wasn't a very good wrestler, but I knew I like I knew basics of wrestling. I had something to fall back on, you know, years of wrestling. And um, there was definitely moments though of doubt, like throughout training, like oh, I never wrestled in college. I wasn't that good. Like I'll never be good enough. Yeah. Fuck all that though. You know, I I know now like you don't need to have these 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 pedigrees in your background. It's how bad do you want to learn? Are you willing to learn? Are you willing to adapt? Are you willing to change? I uh, like, I don't know, just kind of going back to being a long, long road, man, but I kind of got off base too, but I, uh, yeah, man, I started training right out of high school and really fell in love with the sport and just, um, you know, I started in a small town of about 5,000 people and started training. I'm actually from the same town as, uh, Austin Hubbard, me and him started training together. All right. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, we uh, we we traveled over to uh, Pat Miller's gym in Iowa. It was about an hour from our hometown. Started training there for a couple of years, and then developed some connections at that gym to uh, Elevation Fight Team. And we went and visited out there for a week and did a little training camp. And decided that that's where we wanted to move to. And About a year later, I was out west in Colorado. And it's definitely one of the best decisions of my life, man. You know, I had to make sacrifices still now to like to be. It's worth every penny, man. It's uh, I'm just surrounding myself with the right people when I see where everyone's going, and I I know that that's okay what was the last are you good yeah I okay yeah now I, I could hear everything that you were saying though it's just like the screen got frozen and, and then you were oh, okay continue though it was pretty okay good. everything went through though everything. all audio was there yeah okay cool <clears throat> yeah man so I, I uh I don't know I just um I started at a local place and kind of just, I, man, like I said, I, I was never really a gifted athlete when I started into this. And I really just kind of built myself up slowly over the years. And now I'm in a good place and I'm surrounded by all the right people. And I know it's just going to be a matter of time until I get to the, to the stage where I want to realize my dream fight in the UFC, you know, and I can help everyone around me and bring everyone up around me and, Pay back, not literally, but like pay back like debts that I owe to people and just support those around me through through fighting, man. That's the dream. 
sounds like you got a good motivation there, man. Like, uh, is, is it your goal to be in the UFC? To, that, that's your ultimate goal? Do you have maybe uh, other organizations or promotion companies in mind? I mean, yeah, there's other. I mean, Bellator and One are great organizations. PFL, if they have a 135 division. But as a kid, you know, growing up watching, it's just, it's kind of like, you know, when you grow up watching football or baseball in America, you see the MLB or the NFL, like yeah. that is like what the UFC is the equivalent to an MMA. So that that's always kind of your dream growing up. You want to be a UFC fighter. That true, true, man. Like, yeah. so tell me about the strategy that you have right now to get there. I mean, and, you know, it's just, <laughs> as simple as it sounds, man, you just got to fuck people up and keep KOing people and just keep winning, man. <laughs> to break, to, to break that. that down, to break, it really is. I mean, you just gotta win the fights, right? You gotta, you gotta win. And if I can do what I did last time, you know, knock someone out in 30 seconds again, like that's gonna get attention. That's gonna like help push you there. You know what I'm saying? Man, that that was that was a nice that was a nice knockout you you got, man, uh, from from that guy. Like, uh, you you really you really saw his face and you went for it, like bam. Yeah, I um. I knew going into the fight that I was a much more talented fighter than him all around. I knew he had, he might've had like a little bit better, like submission ability than me, maybe, but I knew standing that, that, I, that the opportunities were going to be there, that he, that there was going to be openings to take advantage of. And, you know, fortunately I took advantage of the first opening and it just happened to land perfectly. Yeah. And that was, that, that, was, that was a good knockout. Yeah, man. You know, my first four fights um, were all decisions as a pro. And so, you know, I, that's already an hour of fight time. I can tell you what, man, getting that first round knockout is a hell of a lot better than being exhausted after 15 minutes waiting to hear a decision. Yeah, man, I totally understand that for sure. For sure, man. So tell me about, I've been dying to ask you this. I know you're a big fan of Dragon Ball. Of course. And I've seen you with a with a with a reader and all that and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But you told me that your favorite character, well, one of your favorite characters is Frieza. Yeah. Out of all of them, I have to why him? You know, I, I can't as a kid I hated Frieza so much. But I think that is why as an adult now, why I like really like appreciate and like him, because like the emotion that that character made me feel as a kid, I, I could not stand him. You know, he was like the ultimate villain. I, I think uh, I think Dragon Ball Z was supposed to actually end after the Frieza saga. Really? But, yeah, but you know there was such a demand for it that they, they uh, Akira Toriyama just kept making making more more mangas. But I don't know. He was like just uh, I don't know, just like such a great villain, man. I really like it. And then you know the new movies came out, and he had like his gold form, which I, I wasn't too big into the Dragon Ball Super crap, but like that that form looked pretty sweet with like the the purple and gold man because uh well definitely like uh, the the fight between goku and freeze that was like a legendary fight man oh of and course it man long. it lasted like three weeks on cartoon network <laughs> like it was such a long and long i remember man. i don't know if you remember like but uh, when uh, freeze told goku that like uh the plan that way is going to be destroyed oh. in five minutes five minutes Five minutes equals three weeks. <laughs> three weeks of fighting, man. Yeah. But that was the epic fight. Like, my, by yeah. far, the, my favorite fight of Dragon Ball Z. Maybe other from other than the fight of uh, uh, Broly, the first movie, when he kicked the right. crap out of everyone. Yeah. I think so, too, man. Like, as a kid, that was what I, that was, like, one of the first, I wouldn't say the first, because I'd seen Dragon Ball before that, but, like, just something that really stood out to me and something as a kid that I was really into. And like I said, I could not stay, like, I wanted, like, Frieza to, like, be defeated or whatever. But growing up as now as an adult, like, I, I just love that character and, like, how it, like, just the evilness. Not that I'm an evil person, but, you know, <laughs> you just appreciate it. Man, but yeah, because that's, I have to say, no, I have met a lot of Dragon Ball Z fans. Nobody has told me that Frieza is their favorite un until you. Yeah, and I, I like uh, I like the final form stuff too, like the transformations. Like I've been I've been playing with that idea like for my fights and stuff because I was gonna get my hair braided and like get cornrows, okay. and then maybe get like a shirt or something with like with me in my corner with my scouter and saying like this isn't my final form, 
going to a weigh-in like this, and then the very next day shaving everything. Nice. <laughs> you know, I don't know, just just ideas to mess around with. Man, that's good though. That's good. What do you do? You have any uh, update on uh, your next fight? I'm looking to get on something in September. It, it may be in Colorado. Um, I'm not sure if Alfe. Alfe has a September 11th card that's coming up pretty soon, but there's um there's some cards coming up here that I'd like to get on to. I've gotten an offer for a fight actually, but it's kind of later in the year, and I'm looking to uh, I'm looking to get to fight sooner rather than later. Of course, man. Yeah, definitely. I hope you definitely get that call ASAP so you can get uh you can you can get that fight. You're definitely gonna win that fight. I'm, I'm assuming you're preparing all the time. You're training all the time, constantly, right? All during all this. Yeah, you know, I had my injury about over a month over a month ago, but I, I've been working around that, staying healthy, keeping the weight down, so I can I can be on weight and ready to fight. You know, on yeah. a short notice. It, right now, it's just about being active, getting a fight, and just staying ready for that call. Because right now, with that, you know, with COVID and all this crap, it's a, there's a lot of bullshit going on, but there's also there's also things that can opportunities that can develop from it, and North American fighters have a very good opportunity to get in the UFC right now, more so than they did like around this time last year. Okay, man. Listen, like now that uh, 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 with the uh, with the uh, opening of Jog Farm with the platform and everything, I have gotten a lot of messages by young fighters who are starting, and they don't have a clue what to do, how to start. They want to be professionals. Obviously, most of them, they want to have the ultimate dream to reach the UFC. Yeah. What advice can you give to them, considering that you're not only fighting, but you're working, and you have your own life, and you're balancing all that, you know? That, that is difficult. What advice can you give to them? Absolutely. Um, my, I could say this. Take your social media. This is going to sound kind of simple and maybe even eye rolling, but you need to take your social media very seriously. That's where you're going to develop a lot of relationships, whether it be with promoters, business owners, other social media platforms like Jock Farm. Jock Farm. What they provide is they provide the opportunity to engage in other relationships. Before I started, like really taking social media seriously, you know. I would find sponsorships that I would go to locally, but when I started getting on social media and taking it seriously and reaching out, creating content, I met people like yourself. I met other podcast people on Twitter. I met people and they, they gave me an opportunity to create interviews and get my name out there. Yeah. And that gives them content. So we benefited each other. That's Honestly, huge seriously and take take it as, as it's not really the regret, but I didn't have any after career, you know, and I had like a six year tap from that point. Did we did we lose recording? No, no, it got back again. We're good. Okay, all right. Taking your social media very seriously and, and marketing yourself as a brand. When you're selling, like being able to sell tickets, reaching out to people individually, like a, a post about a, about like your upcoming fight isn't, isn't enough. You need to be able to show to promoters that what you can provide and worth. And in turn, they're going to be able to pay you more if you're able to like bring people to your show and show your value. That's a great advice, man. What about getting in a really good gym, like the one that you're at? For example, I have also a young fighter who wants to compete in USA. He's from France. And he's, yeah. he wants to go to California and, and be part of AKA. Okay. You know, that's you know, I, like a very famous gym, very good gym. What would be your advice to be a part of that team like that? You know, that's, I had a very, very similar, when I, uh, when I was early in my amateur career, I wanted to train at AKA too, actually. My, uh, my aunt lives out near AKA. I went and visited for a week there and trained there. And um, it just didn't come to be, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, but relating to that, I can say to that person from France, there's no right time. If that's what you want, then that's what you have to go do. So if that means you have to cancel every single, every single subscription service, you have to cancel your Netflix to save that nine ninety nine dollars a month to save up, to travel, to go to do whatever, then that's what you have to do. Because if you just want to talk about it to your friends and say like, yeah, this is what I want to do or talk about it on a podcast, like that's all good and all that's like, that's, that's good to listen to. But there is no right time. There is absolutely no right time to, to do anything. It's you just have to create it and you have to like make it happen. Um, myself, I, uh, 
you know, a blessing for me was I was, I was working in Illinois and I lost my job. I got fired and I could have just been like, Oh, now I need to find a way to save more money and to like save up to move to Colorado. But I didn't, you just, I picked, I'm like, all right, now's the time. And I just went and yeah. found a way to make it out here and do what I can. There's no right time, man. I will say though, if you're gonna live in California, it's expensive as hell. <laughs> so I'll, I will say that, man. That, that's gonna be tough to live in like San Jose, San Francisco. <laughs> that that's something I'll point out to him, man. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah, man. But you but you gotta be willing to make that those sacrifices. Definitely. Yeah. That you know that's what I did before I moved out here. I canceled every single like my Spotify, my Netflix, my whatever all that just so I could conserve every little penny to be able to be out here for X amount of time. Man, that's a great example for many, dude. Like, thank you for mentioning that. Absolutely. All right, buddy. So thank you so much, man, for having, for finally joining me, man. No, you have no. this talk. I know, man. I had so much fun too. We were like, that was like an, almost an hour. I didn't even, yeah. yeah. Let's, uh, let's keep it going, man. Uh, Absolutely, I'll, I'll man. Don't go you. MIA on me, man. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But hey, before I let you go, Justin, you want to give a shout out to anybody right now? Yeah, uh, my my management Dodge Sports. Um, you guys have been doing awesome. I've been, I'm I'm just you know happy to sign with you guys, be with you guys. Uh, my team, Elevation Fight Team. Let's go. Let's keep it going. Follow me, guys. You guys are watching J What's on MMA on Twitter, awesome. Facebook, and Instagram. Jock Farm. Check it out, man. It's good stuff. Thank you, man. It means a lot, bro. Definitely, All right, dude. buddy. So I'll, I'll be bothering you from time to time, see where we can have another conversation. Yeah, of course. You know, discuss a little bit more about Dragon's, Dragon Ball Z. I need to get to the bottom of this. You have, you watched, uh, have you watched Yu Yu Hakusho? Uh, which show, sorry? It's called Yu Yu Hakusho. Man, I know which show, uh, which one you mean now, yeah, but I haven't watched it. Do you recommend oh, it? Oh, man. So, I got to be honest. That one, for me, is my favorite over Dragon Ball Z. That's number really? one. Dragon, Dragon Ball Z is number two. I, yeah, I, I would highly recommend it, man. It's, ah, uh, man, that's all I can say. I, I'd recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'll go check it out right now for sure, and I'll let you know how. It's it very similar, very similar to Dragon Ball Z. But once you get past the first six or seven episodes, it moves, dude, and I'm telling you, if you're a fan of that, of Dragon Ball and, like, the energy and all that shit, yeah. you're going to love this. I'll check yeah. it out, man, definitely. Maybe we can discuss this on our next talk, bro. Yeah, dude, let me know. Let me know what you think. Watch some, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> all right, man. You take care. You have a good night, Justin. Thank you. Hey, you too, man. Have a good day. Take care. Peace. Later.